we are looking at creative content. Creative content is about how to uh, do a lot of uh, uh, design for a good advertisement or a good product promotion. So first, we are looking at the creative photography. So when we take photograph, always remember the image that you are using or you're taking must be something that unique and original. Original means your own product, uh, your own photo. The photo that you take uh, is your own photo using your own camera to take. Don't take the photos from either network or website in to put into your advertisement. All right, the photo must be original and unique that you take yourself. And the picture must have certain clear message to tell you what it is uh, all about. And it must be beautiful and elegant and with some story or storyline or storyteller. For example, you can look at this. Uh, the concept may, uh, is selling camera. So you have some story about this. Camera is used to take photo of uh, birds, for example. You understand the story. And then um, you might take photos because you want to show the, the expression of the environment and so on. So it depends on your story. Then you have to decide how to take the photo. But always bear in mind, you have to look at things like background. What are the background? You can blur the background if necessary. Look at the prop. That means you have to prepare the things to make the photo beautiful and nice. And then the lighting must be suitable for the ideas of product. If you want to sell something that um, to, to show the product is nice and beautiful, then you might use a um, yellow light. Okay, to make it nice and beautiful. But if you are want to show something that is uh, very sharp or what, then you cannot use a very dark color to show the your product. So that is really depends on your your photo, your your story of your photo. And then the rule of the third composition means that almost thirty percent of forty five um. 60 70 percent of the photo must be must be the the things that you want to show okay more than 30 percent so when you look at this okay the background of the photo then you see if the background is so dark and my product is so dark i hardly see what is inside the photo same thing if your product is so is in a white color and the background is in white then I also hardly see what product is it in uh, at the back. And then when you look at this, it's nice. But what is the focus of the photo? Is it this cup or the macaroni here? If your focus is the macaroni, it looks like the cup is getting my attention more than the, the biscuits. Same thing for this one. All right. You have to be very concerned. When you take photo, whether uh, try to avoid the unnecessary sh shadow in the photo. And when do you do lighting? Remember, lighting is so important. Most people will use bright light. Okay, you can borrow the the handphone from other people to to increase the light before you take the photo, so it will be nicer. Because you might not have a professional lights like this, so you can use light from the handphone. To add the lighting to the photo so that you can take a nice photo. Same thing here when we talk about the rule of third composition, you make sure the most of the picture is showing what you want to show. Okay, if your target is this uh, young man, then you can see the concern is uh, the photo is here. If your target is this uh, uh, B, then you can see this photo is suitable. That means more than 30% of the people uh, of the photo is concentrated on the importance object into the in the photo. And then the other things is not that important. Okay, same thing with the other pictures. And then for your project, we expect you to take red lay photos. That means you take from photo from top. So what happened is you put the product 
on either on the table or on the floor and then you prepare something for decoration and then after that you take photo from the top so it's very important you you have some crop some preparation um make it nice and beautiful before you take photo and then always remember the third composition it is important to show your product but at the same time you might have something to make it beautiful but the first things that you put in the photo must not be the concentrate Man, must not be too important than the most important thing you want to show and next we talk about creative videography when you take video remember do not copy but you can try to find the inspiration from other people's video and reviews you also try to create a storyboard storyline for your video so for taking videos with phone try to use a tripod to stabilize your shoot because if you you call it with your hand it might be uh shaking and make it very hard to to see your face and so on find a setting that is complement your product suitable for your products add the light always uh, make sure the place you take videos have enough lights okay if you need a, a very strong sunlight then you can go outdoor for the video taking but make sure you find an environment not to be not too noisy with the sound of bees birds and so on use microphone to capture high quality sound add smooth movement to your shoot show your product in action and choose the best one okay, you can take few photos and choose the best one next you are looking at writing skill okay so copywriting is the process of writing a uh, suitable marketing text that will help you to promote your product sell your product and motivate customers to buy your product so we will use one method we call it aida method a for attention, I for interest, D for desire, A for action. So first you have to attract the attention of the reader to your products with a good headlines or opening lines to grab the attention. Next, you must create some generate some interest to the reader to read the whole page of your, your advertisement or review. Then you you have to start to produce desire okay uh, let them feel interesting let them feel intent to buy your products and so on and last you try to persuade them ask them to buy your product so there are many writing techniques these are three main writing techniques teaser teaser means you give some preview of the products of something new but not very detailed just a little bit you tell people a little bit about your products and then next soft selling involves information sell sharing prior to selling it can be used multiple times and then remember for soft selling you don't uh, tell customers to buy a product you try don't try to push customers to buy a product you only tell them the benefits of using the product you only tell them the the interesting part of the product or the important uniqueness of the product that's all but you are not trying to tell them oh now you buy okay if you want to tell them now please come to buy our product then you are doing hard sell hard sell means you directly sell the product already first you might give them um some ideas about our product and later on in the same page you tell them okay if you want to buy our product please contact me at this number so this is what we call Hard sell. So normally we will tell them about the product or services benefit and we will mention the price as well. So the customer who are interested with our product are going to buy our product. So when you look at this, this is example of teaser. All right, it show a picture something like this. Then you might be very interesting. What is this? Then you say unpack on certain date. So it means that this is a new product that they are going to tell you on this date but they will not tell you what is inside it so this is this so you might find it oh interesting i want to know what is this make you very curious and you want to you want to see or you want to know more then he's they start to do soft selling so soft selling 
uh, you must have uh, you better to to have title so intro and some content about something uh customer might want to know if you are selling skincare product then you have you can say share some tips to to clean the skin some tips to do makeup and so on so the content very important and then you might ask them to like your product that's all you don't expect them to buy a product at this point but for hard selling uh you need them to buy a product this is one example of soft selling things okay jumla tabungan travel setahun jika sehari then you give them some tips okay so if you can set five ringgit a day for a year then you have this amount of money with this amount of money then you can go travel to many places so this is one way of uh, soft selling and people might be more interested to look at soft selling than hard selling at certain time okay another one nama pertama yang keluar apabila anda okay type on okay kena belanja so this is when people see that okay when people see that wow very interesting people might want to know more even though you didn't ask them to to buy a product but this is something very interesting already you might have uh, also can have sales promotion you're telling people on which day we might start to have some self promotion okay coming in or we're going to sell this product a certain day okay you can see this okay all right then so sell they have three ways of doing it one is to tell a story one way another way is to give them some tips of doing things all right and next we are going to look at hard selling hard sell so hard sell remember hard sell included call them to do something to buy the things okay so same thing with soft sell you must have something title to attract the customer attention to give them description and then give them something that uh make them intend to buy a product they want to buy a product then you give them the link you might give them the voucher to attract them or remind them oh you have two days to buy this after these two days you cannot buy at this price for example so this is one way to attract people to buy a product within a certain period and then so this one is what you can see uh hard sell for cash uh five days four night to go to where okay how much you have to pay and then i'll show you the beautiful photo before this you'll see the young ladies in japan so now you are interested to buy now okay this is another example for example you have this hard sell they tell you free uh i'm not free a cheaper branch for adults and children for example okay so you can see there are many difference between hard sell and soft sell when we talk about hard selling we always tell them with price we we also uh give them ways to contact us to buy the products but soft selling most of the time we only tell them with uh, our products or we give them some information that customer might interested to know and this information must be related to our product and you can see just now the example of the travel agency that's showing you the photos of people in other countries showing you the tips of uh, saving money so all these are the ways to do soft selling next copywriting using hashtag Remember, using hashtag is to help you to build your brand and to get new followers. And then when people try to uh, type the terms, then people can find your, your, your photo or your advertisement. So for brand awareness, normally we are going to use uh, about 11 to 20 hashtags, not too many. And then make sure the hashtag is always unique trending and general then people are interested to know better next we also look at cta call to action call to action is part of the hard selling because we want them to buy our products so there are many ways to write the sentence uh, or many ways to call to action cta so we can say price based on selling techniques all right so we can use facebook and then however there are different methods if you are using different platform okay you can use a live sell 
Okay, Facebook are quite popular recently, especially um, after the uh, during the MCO and after that. Okay, we give them bonus, we guarantee them, we give them reminder when is the time you can get this offer. Using Instagram also, you have you can use hashtag to hashtag the things, and you can put it into the picture format in caption or tag someone about that. Also, you can do it in uh, email marketing. You can use email marketing to do the call call to action. Like um, you will sometimes receive some uh, advertisement. We tell you, okay, this is our promotion. If you want to buy the things, you can get to use this website to buy the things. So these are email marketing. So uh, some companies, they like to use pop-up. This is one way to attract attention also. When you open the website, the first thing pop up into your eyes, you will be attracted. So this is important. When you see, oh, 25 ringgit discount for my next purchase, then you might want to purchase more with this discount. And then you can use sidebar. That means you put it next to the website, okay, next to a website, next to the main ingredient or main content. Then you put the sidebar, okay, or you can put it underneath the content or even inside part of the content and the, even the footers okay so this is some way so when you do this uh, creative writing always remember there are very important terms that you can use for example if you are selling a good product then you can use terms like proven tested especially for skincare you will use tested natural okay guarantee or selamat digunakan dan sebagainya so it depends on what product is suitable or uh, which was is suitable for example the second example our coffee is fresh and improved by our secret it's guaranteed the best in town for example next you also always remember these uh, four tips first you make sure the structure is suitable depends on your what product you are selling and make sure that the ways of writing is suitable to the group of customers that you are selling. Imagine if you are using a youngster way of talking, but your target market is elder girl, then you might not get the good response. And specifically, choice of words must be specific and support with further information and must be appropriate, suitable for the ideas. And if you say, the product is uh, high quality you might use the word premium is expensive okay exclusive for example if uh, special and for limited quantity only so this is one way to write copywriting and then remember I keep on saying copywriting has this format you can follow this to to do your own copywriting for your product or services and then uh, this is example of the template eh? Okay, for example, the main product is a selling product. Then, who is your target market? You have to know who is your target market. And then, what are the offer of bonus that you are giving? Okay, highlight what problems you can solve or what issue you are dealing with. Okay, offer them what are the deals and then launching it. All right, so next, remember, when you write your copywriting, you have to check Google. What are the words that uh, get the most attention at either one time? Remember, the terms keep changing. So we, we have to look at, check the Google terms. We want to know what are the terms or what are the keywords that people are, trend, uh, are looking at trendy now. And when we look at the content strategy, when we are doing um, this copywriting, the content is so important and the content must be always organic. Organic means um, something that you prepare yourself, you are not paying, but however, this will have a lower reach, that means you, you, you get to smaller amount of uh, audience. You don't get to everyone because, for example, you promote it in Facebook, you promote it in Instagram, WhatsApp, you get a smaller group of customers. But if you use a paid 
advertisement, then you might get people to help you to do the promotion. So when you pay for it, then you must get a high target uh, audience. Okay? If you don't get a, to reach a high target number of audience, then it's worth, worth, not worth it wasting your money, your cost to do the paid advertisement. And tools for designing the creative content, there are a few tools. You can see uh, one is uh, Canva, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Spark, and Qt. Right, for example, Canva, most of these are very easy to use. Even though I, I don't have much knowledge about designing, also I can find it very easy to use because they, they might have template. Then you can take one template and uh, change it according to your needs. So you have them, they have template for banner, poster, and so on, which you can make good use of it. All right. And always remember when we do this uh, content writing, when we do our photography, we take photographs, we take videos for our products. You always remember about the creative licensing. Okay. Remember, if the product or the some information is licensed, then you have to know whether you can use that photo or video or not. If you purchase a content, you purchase a content from somebody who designed it or prepared it, then you need to pay for that. Okay? You need to purchase it. And then this allows you to use that content. But if you are not willing to pay for that, then you can use something that is open license. That means they allow you to use it but with the condition, uh, sometimes it's not for commercial purposes. Some information you can use, but not for commercial. So we'll be very careful when you want to use open sources information. When they're open, meaning that they're open for use to use, like for education, for example, for your own good, for learning, for example, yes, you can use it. But if you use for, Open uh, use for commercial purposes, they might not allow it. Okay, so sometimes they have uh, many types of uh, uh, generate content that you can borrow to use, and there are free sources of content that you can see and you can borrow to use. But be very careful, and you must know whether this is suitable or you can use for commercial or not. And your content on social media channel also you must protect them okay you make sure that license you get license for your product you don't wait for other people to copy your product uh, your your photo your videos to use that is wrong you have to protect your own video you have to protect your own photo that you make for for your product or for your companies Okay, so even YouTube, they have their own licensing. They have standard YouTube licensing and common creative license. So when, whenever I post my video on YouTube, I use CCL, common creative license. You can refer to my video on how to get the license in YouTube. I prepare one uh, in, my, in my YouTube app channel. So Creative Commons license, there are actually few different license. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different license with different purpose. Okay. Some will we'll talk to uh will give you more freedom to use, some will give you more restriction. Let's look at it one by one. First, the first type is public domain with no license, so you are free to use. Of course, this might not be the best thing that you can use. Normally, when unprotected, it means that it's not very special and nice to use. Okay, how about those CC by CC by this one? Meaning that if you use the the photo or the video, you have to provide the name of the people who prepared the author or the people who prepared. So you, you, if you take this photo and put it in your website, you have to say, uh, this photo is taken from which website or who. So you have to attribute that. You have to say this video or this photo from where. Okay? 
and you can edit the video or the photo for your own commercial use. And if CC by SA, it means that you have to attribute and you can share, okay, with specific limitation. You can share, you can change a little bit, and you can use it for your own commercial purposes. If CC by ND, okay, means that you have to same thing attribute. That means you have to tell the who are the creator of the product or the photo or videos. But at the same time, you cannot edit the you cannot edit the photo or the video, but you can use it for commercial purposes. And for all the license after that, you cannot use for commercial purposes. Okay, for all the, of it. And CC by NC meaning that you can modify it for your personal use for education, but not for commercial. Okay, CC by NCSA. You can change it, but with little bit uh, changes on it or with specific limitation, and you cannot use for commercial. And the last is CC by NC ND. You must call the 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 creators or the author of the product of the video or or photo, and you cannot change. You cannot use for commercial purposes. So actually, for all this CC means that a CCPI means that you have to attribute who is the person who take the photo must be putting down there. If you know, if you don't know who is the person who take the photo, then you tell I take this photo from which website. Okay, and so um, this is the licensing. Okay, this is licensing and for the purpose to protect the videos, the photo, and even your creative writing of certain products. This is the, the trend of the 21st century in which we start to protect our own uh, property. This is uh, our own knowledge property. So we have to protect it with license. We have to tell people, you can share, but you cannot edit. Or you can edit, but you, you cannot use for, uh, you can use for commercial purposes. Or you cannot use for commercial purposes. You have to choose either one. Okay, so that's all for this uh, marketing unit. And thank you very much for listening to me. And if you have questions, please contact me directly. Thank you.